a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Today is International Women's Day. In the world of economics, production of goods and services has a concrete value. But what's it worth to run a household, care for your elders, or do the laundry? Responsibilities that have historically fallen to women. The traditional measure of GDP sees this labor as invisible or unproductive, according to economist Marilyn Waring. She believes finding an alternative value system has important implications for our environment and our future. When I was very young, I was elected to the New Zealand Parliament. And at that age, you learn mostly by listening to others' stories. And there began to be a pattern in all of these stories I was being told. And I started to ask enough questions to try and track to the core of this pattern of values that was part of all of these stories. And I found it in an economic formula called the gross domestic product, or the GDP. Most of you will have heard of it. Many of you won't have any idea what it actually means. The rules were drawn up by Western-educated men in 1953. They established a boundary of production in drawing up these rules. What they were keen to measure was everything that involved a market transaction. So on one side of the boundary, everything where there was a market exchange was counted. It doesn't matter whether the exchange is legal or illegal. On the other side of the boundary of production, there was this extraordinary phrase in the rules, that the work done by the people they called non-primary producers was, quote, of little or no value. So I thought, let's see how many non-primary producers we have here today. So in the last week or so, how many of you have transported members of your household or their goods without payment? How many of you have done a bit of cleaning, a bit of vacuuming, a bit of sweeping, a bit of tidying up the kitchen? Yeah? How about going shopping for members of the household? Preparing food, cleaning up afterwards, laundry, ironing. As far as economics is concerned, you were at leisure. We're in Christchurch, where people have lived through a devastating natural disaster and recovered. And ever since that time, New Zealand has been told Our growth figures are great because we're rebuilding Christchurch. Nothing was ever lost from the national accounting framework because of the loss of lives, the loss of land, the loss of buildings, the loss of special spaces. Now, it might also be becoming obvious to you that this boundary of production works in terms of our environment when we're mining it, when we're deforesting, when we're deleting our environment, when we're fishing out our marine resources, legal or illegal, as long as market is exchanged, it's all good for growth. To leave our natural environment alone, to sustain it, to protect it, is apparently worth nothing. You see, To measure GDP, you have to assume that some kind of production or service delivery or consumption occurs inside a nation state, and you know where that is. But trillions of dollars are circling the globe in many parts 
from our Googles, our Facebooks, our Twitters, siphon through a number of tax shelters, so that when we click on our computer and go to download some software, we don't know where it was produced, and frankly, no one knows where we are as we're consuming it either. When we look at the amount of time that's taken in the unpaid sector. What we find is that in almost every country where I've ever seen the data, it is the single largest sector of the nation's economy. In the last three years, for example, the UK statistician has declared that all of that unpaid work is the equivalent of all manufacturing and all retailing in the UK. Now, as a policymaker, you cannot make good policy. If the single largest sector of your nation's economy is not visible, you can't presume to know where the needs are. You can't locate time poverty. So, what can go in the place of GDP? I think time use is the most important indicator going forward. Every one of us has exactly the same amount of it. If there are going to be critical issues as we move forward, we need a solid database because whatever we change away from the GDP, we're going to be stuck with it for about 50 years. As every year goes past, we get much better at measuring the devastation of it, of measuring how little we protect anymore. And yet, with climate change, we don't all have to be scientists to see, to feel, to know what is happening to our beautiful planet. So, from now on, whenever you listen to the news, you're not going to go blank when they say GDP. You're going to think, "I know what they're talking about, and it's not good." <laughs> I know that there are alternatives. And I'm going to spend my time correcting people, talking to them about this value base, and talking to them about what the alternatives can be, because humankind and our planet need another way. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Christchurch, New Zealand. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Christchurch. Visit ted.com/tedxshorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.